Yeah, hello everyone. Well, I've uh, spent probably a total of about four or five days putting this uh, hydrocyclone sluice together and uh, wanted to make a video of its first inaugural run. Um, basically, the design is uh, fairly simple. It's a little six inch gold rat sluice uh, that I extended with some old polycarbonate sheet that I had left over from another project. Uh, a little sump pump to recirculate the water through. Got some um, separation tubes for the catch tank and the settling tank. And uh, that's uh, the sluice. As I said before, gold rat sluice, six inch. Extended with that polycarb. Feed line comes out of the sump pump and back into the hydrocyclone to try and get rid of the sediment. Get some water here and fill her up for a test run. Beautiful day. Actually got up close to the old 100 mark today. Pretty warm but now there's a sea breeze coming so good opportunity to get outside and set this thing up give it its first run. So in total, I think I put in about 70 litres of water, so two, um, two five gallon uh, buckets plus about another half bucket. Turn the power on here, sun's starting to go down so I apologise for the shade angles on the rig. But anyway, you get the get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. Got a gravity switch that needs to be above the pump for it to start pumping, and uh, plenty of water coming through. That's a good thing. And uh, I can throttle that back with that red valve on top near the header box there to control the flow rate, uh, which I'll do later, trim that back, we we'll try and work out a way of keeping the switch above the pump because as soon as it drops below it will cut off again, maybe I'll cut that and wire it together, Got a couple of little leaks there from the assembly, I haven't used any um, Teflon tape or anything on those joints, they're plastic so i going to throw this back a little bit now because it's uh, just a little bit too aggressive, the feed. And uh, have a closer look at the uh, riffle box, sluice box, running the dream mats as you can see. And here we go, the uh, gravity switch dropped down again, so I lost my, lost my feed. Elevate that again, and I'll grab the uh, something to stick down on and cable tie it on so it can stay there throughout the uh, test process. Like I say, this is really the first test run for this unit. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be very effective. Got a couple of little leaks there between the catch tank and the settling tank. Um, yeah, so I'll probably have to silicone that up a bit later on and uh, stop those leaks. Uh, I've got the water running nicely with a little bit of uh, jet dry. I can say apologies for the angle, shade angles here but it is later in the day and it was very hot today so I wasn't too keen on coming outdoors in that heat. There's a little cyclone, hydrocyclone. The idea is that it's going to return um, some of the uh, uh, sediment back to the catch tank um, and we're going to see how that will work in practice. This will be a bit of a torture uh, test because uh, I'll be running the tailings from the super concentrates run from the last video that we did from the prospecting trip before. So here we go. Uh, this is uh, hooking up the sluice and I'll start running some 
uh, material through. I'm filming this for my uh, TikTok followers. So that's why I'm holding that uh, camera. Camera phone, phone, phone camera, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can see how red it is. Typical iron ore um, type deposit. Pindan material, basically rust, iron oxide rust, and uh, starting to water starting to cloud up. Can't really see much of a difference between the water coming out of the bottom of the hydro cyclone and the riffle box the sluice. Sorry. Uh, yet uh, we shall see, I guess, as we go along. Keep, continue on feeding this material. Uh, it will start to get pretty dirty soon. Um, I guess even with it getting as dirty uh, as I expect, it will still be effective so long as I can moderate the uh, water going down the roof of the box to the point where it's still uh, usable. Obviously having the confidence that I've got all the angles set up right, the flow rate set up right so that I'm not washing gold down to the uh, catch tank. And, uh, I do a, probably do a, te a test pan after I've finished this process. I am not really expecting to find uh, any gold much at all because uh, this is only the tailings run from the supercons that we ran through the dry blower on the last trip at the end so uh, even though I'd like to see some colour uh, I'm not disappointed if I don't find any because uh, that's proving that the uh, dry blower is doing its job and you can see that now it's starting to uh, cloud up but uh, still still fine to run you can still see all the uh, riffles in the dream map. So uh, it's not much of a challenge yet. I'll just uh, crank up the speed a little bit, the flow rate. It is pushing out a little bit in the middle of the um, sluice. Why I've designed that um, diffuser. I think that's a fairly common issue with uh, um, sluices, clean up sluices, is that the majority of the water actually is flowing in the centre. I don't think that's a big drama. Okay, uh, here I am about halfway through. It's really starting to uh, muddy up. Keep feeding. You can sort of just make out now uh, the riffles in the dream mat, but it's starting to get quite difficult uh, to see. So the sooner I can get these fed through, uh, and get the get the, um, the mats cleaned out, the better. Keep this going. I was hoping that the hydro cyclone would take uh, more of the sediment out as I was working. And I have actually built another hydro cyclone myself, a 3D printed one. And uh, here you can see that the water's starting to get really uh, orange now, bright orange. As I feed the last of the material through, thank God, because it's really starting to get quite nasty. Of course, this is, as I said before, this is a bit of a torture test. Normally, you'd just be using this to clean up your uh, concentrates, your super concentrates. So it's not really designed as a production uh, sluice for rain. Just you know, material straight from the ground. It's really designed for just doing cleanups, and I intend to run some uh, other concentrates that I have, just in a small amount. And you can see, apart from the crappy shadows, how uh, just how that stuff's like blood coming out of here. It is nasty. You could also probably run those that, that um, until that sorry that liquid from the bottom of the hydro site just out onto the ground. So 
maintain the, maintaining the reduction of sediment but I've got running into the catch tank for better or worse at the moment and, uh, down to the last little bit Real. It's still, I mean, you can still run this uh, water, even though know, it's super crappy, but it's still doing the job. Any hope of seeing exactly what's happening here in the water? No hope. And look at that. Even in the um, sapling tank, there's a, a lot of uh, fine material coming through here as well. And I put a, a sock on the bottom of that submersible pump. Look at that stuff. That's unbelievable. That's just basically rust. Yeah, I put a sock on the bottom of the sub pump and I found out after I finished it that it got uh, sucked up into the bottom of the pump. But luckily the pump kept working. It would destroy it. So that's a good thing. Not a shot of it material coming out of the bottom of the hydrocyclone. It's really nasty. It's almost at the oily point. Muddy. Very muddy. So yeah, you could potentially run that material out of that hose uh, onto a waistline where it can have time to settle, but obviously here it's not going to be an opportunity to settle. Can't see the green mats at all anymore through the side there of the polycarbonate. It's really pretty muddy. Okay, well, that's the end of that process. Thank heavens. We'll uh, pull the pump out and run some fresh water through the sluice just to clear out the riffle box. I keep saying riffle box, but it's really a clean up sluice, but anyway. Cleans that up nice straight away. Table's nearly collapsing under the weight of this setup that I've got now, with those containers as full as they are. So, just as well I've finished, otherwise, this source will be lying on the ground. So, yeah, that's pretty nasty. Shut it down now, and we'll um, clean out the mats. Now hopefully, hopefully, we don't have any gold in there. But if we do have some gold, uh, I won't be uh, too upset either. It gives us a good idea of our recovery rate. Um, there was no fine gold actually where we were prospecting in the last trip. It was all kind of coarse material. And um, we moved about a tonne and a half of material for 11 grams. We were reasonably confident that we pretty much got everything out. Just loosen off the bottom mat, drag that out, and I'm going to raise the ire of uh, all you technical fellas out there by just dragging this mat out. They'll be saying, oh, all the fine gold's running down into the catch tank. Well, if I lose anything, it goes down into the catch tank. But yeah, I should have put this into a bucket. I don't think I lost much, if anything. Probably nothing. But yeah, I should add that bucket underneath the bottom of the um, sluice. My bad. Now, I did cut this top mat, and it's a bit of a nightmare to drag it out of the diffuser box, the header box, whatever you want to call it. I did get it out eventually. With a bit of. Uh, Manhandling. Clean up the uh, sluice box. The last little bit. Mr. Scoopy, the 3D printed scoop, prospecting scoop. And uh, yeah, clean these uh, uh, sluice mats. So that I can pan out the uh, remainder of the material. It's not very much, which is 
the aim of the game, and then the clean ups this. So, yeah, I put through uh, about 20 kilos of material, and I end up with probably less than half a cup of material that I'm about to pan out. clean, transfer that into a pan, and uh, I'll start uh, panning this out, I'm going to speed the video up, so you have to sit through my slow panning technique, and get down to just a little bit of material, obviously not seeing any gold, which kind of makes me happy. So yeah, I did find one little piece and then another tiny, tiny piece. And the bigger piece that I that I retrieved was 0 0.004 of a gram, so nothing too much to worry about. Did get through the entire process of uh, dry blowing and separating and going through the super cons, but I'm not upset with that result. Not too bad really. Just a very small percentage of, of our total recovered amount. Nice if we didn't lose anything, but anyway, it's actually a nice little piece of gold. So yeah, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this uh, first video. We'll catch you later.